Pike Hut's part two. Need I say more? Well, maybe just a little bit here. We're actually going to work backwards on this one. I'm going to start by uh, showing you guys how to cut them, and then we'll explain exactly how, uh, you know, to, to figure out your cut angles, your transition angles, your assembly angles, calculate the center line radius, do it all by hand, the whole works in fine TFS fashion. And I'll explain why. It took me well over a year to get this video done. And, uh, you know, that's a long story. So uh, let's get on it. start with a tube. Pretty simple. Now I usually like to point the seam up and what I do is clamp it to the table and measure out half the diameter of the tube. So in this case it's a three inch tube and we're going to be using uh, marking it out an inch and a half which is half the diameter. Now you need a straight edge. A uh, piece of small channel, a uh, straight you know edge of uh, you know piece of angle, whatever you got. You know just grab a line from one side to the other. Now I'm going to mark my saw the same inch and a half and this is our clocking reference. So as soon as we uh, get set up here, I'm going to run on 9 degree pie cuts, and uh, we're still going to have an 18 degree transition angle. So the 9 degree cut angle, 18 degree transition, set up the angle finder, just get the saw clock where it needs to be at 9 degrees, and here is my distance, which I usually measure the widest part of the pie cut, which is usually at the top, and in this case it's set for an inch for our center line radius, which we calculated, I'll show you that later on in the video. Simply get in there, set the tube up to where it's straight in line, and start cutting. There is a pie cut. Pretty simple. Now all I gotta do to make sure that they all get lined up exact same spot every single time, I'm gonna do is flip it over. Cut again. Now you stick the two of them together and you notice that our seam reference that we left on top is perfect, it lines up, and both pie cuts are the exact same spot. Now we just flip it over again and cut again. Just cut, 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 cut. All you do, slice it, flip it, slice it, flip it. Make sure it's lined up every single time, boom. Well, that's super easy, if I had a bandsaw. Well, in the event that you don't have a bandsaw, there is an alternative cutting method, using a chop saw. You can use abrasives, you can use carbide tip wheels, metal blades, all kinds of other stuff, and I'll show you the handiest and dandiest of all pie cut holding cutting tools that uh, you know was ever made, that I made uh, you know years ago. Either way, here we go. This is a uh, handy dandy tool. Uh, it's basically a piece of sheet metal that is, uh, the bottom section is the uh, diameter of the tube at three inches, and the sides go up to inch and a half. So I can just stick the tube inside of there, mark it down on both sides evenly, and now we have clocking references. Now setting up the uh, chop saw is pretty much the exact same as setting up the bandsaw. Use the angle finder, set it up at nine degrees, I'm gonna make the exact same cuts on this one. And uh, it's a little bit difficult to get the clocking reference. So basically all we're gonna do is uh, sit in here, in here uh, you know, take a straight edge to the blade, and measure the difference you know, with the pie cut sticking out there, and then slice it up. As soon as you're done with that, flip it over using the, uh, the tool there, the guide, as a reference. Measure it out, cut it again. Well, that was pretty simple, wasn't it? Yeah, well, the chop saw is actually a very versatile tool, and most people have it inside of their shops or their home garages. The only downside to it is it does take a little bit more time to measure all of those out and compare it to the chop saw. You can build yourself a fence or a stop or something like that, but the accuracy of it also drops a little bit. But do keep in mind that famous rule when it comes to using the chop saw, let the blade do the work, not all of your muscles. Don't force the blade, otherwise it will deflect. Now, the next question, how do I change the center line radius of my pie cuts or of my transition without changing the transition angles or the cut angles? There is a way to do that. It's very, very simple, and this is how it's done. The center line radius has absolutely nothing to do with the uh, cut angles or the transition angles or the assembly angle for that matter. All you gotta do is cut a longer piece, okay? Now, I'm gonna put these up to the smaller ones that we did. Notice we have the exact same angle, same transition, same everything. It's just a longer piece. Now, that longer piece translates to larger center line radius or more gradual bend. Now, I'm gonna combine this with uh, all the cleanup efforts, something that you should probably know about this at the same time. Grinding to clean these up, very, very light work. Just like this, just let it take the burrs away. Don't, you know, gouge into it, don't push into it. Let the flap disc do the work, not your muscles. If you have any large gaps or any significant uh, 
uh, changes in it, you're not going to get a good clean fit up. And a good clean fit up like this is exactly what we want on our pie cuts. So very light work. Now, if that was all the information you needed about pie cuts, thank you for watching. I'll see you guys on the next episode. Make sure you skip to the end of the video to click all the video cards and, you know, everything else like that. Subscribe, check it out, all the rest of that good stuff. But for the rest of you that want to continue on here, there is a reason why it took well over a year to make the second round of pie cuts. Yes, I put in pie cuts part five, part two, part three, part six, part 20, part whatever, but you never found actual pie cuts part two. Well, most of the video footage was corrupt and, uh, and there were a lot of scheduling issues that came about it with it at the same time. So as I had to reshoot a lot of that video and then I had to, uh, you know, run into a lot of other scheduling. Either way, it was a pain in the rear to do it. But now we get to work on something else. Main questions here. Why the hell do we use pie cuts? And my favorite question, which is actually not a question, it's more of a statement, is pie cuts suck. Well, here's the reason behind it, why we use pie cuts, and this is the footage that I shot well over a year ago trying to make pie cuts part two. It's the only footage that survived. Let's get into that one. Now these pieces were actually all uh, ridiculously tight. I did 9 degree pie cuts or 9 degree cut angles for an 18 degree transition. And if I remember correctly, all of these were done on a 2 inch center line radius. So this ridiculously tight 90 degree bend is exactly why we use pie cuts, or at least that's one reason out of the two top reasons why we do it. Now this piece that I'm making is a dump tube. You saw this in the uh, forward facing turbo manifold episode and a couple of other ones that was snuck in there. I think the jig episode, I mentioned the actual jig that I made here. So we're duplicating this, this uh, dump tube that's on the right there. And uh, after I get this 90 assembled here, you notice that I'm gonna change the direction of that piece of pie. I clocked it and aimed it down for that hole. So you can actually see that there's a complete change of direction and I'm gonna do it a second time with this other piece here. So these two pieces I just added are actually both clocked in a different direction. And now I'm gonna start from the bottom and work my way back up. And these three pieces that are that are set up here, these are actually on three different axes. They, they, they all clock a different direction and that's to actually change the direction, which is one of the biggest benefits of pie cuts. So when somebody says they're stupid or they're useless, well, you can't really do this with a mandrel bend, and that's another big reason why we use it. Now, every now and again you build a piece kind of like this one, and uh, it leaves you with this small gap or an irregular shaped piece of pie. And we have to cut what we usually refer to as a keystone or a key pie. Wrap it up with a piece of tape, cut it out with a razor blade, nice and even and neat, very, very clean. And all we're going to do is just transfer this over to a straight piece of tube, get it wrapped around there, trace it out with a marker, and then cut it with a grinder. It's very, very easy to do. The cleanup is exactly the same. We use the flat disc, it's nice and light. And as soon as we're done getting it cleaned up, we slide it in here, and there's our assembly. Now, I'm gonna talk just a little bit about pie cuts here. You can watch me well and some of the benefits about it. Well, the major benefits that you see out of pie cuts is you can achieve virtually any uh, center line radius you want, including smaller than the diameter of the tube. In this case, we have a two inch center line radius on three inch tubes. And then, uh, the, you know, it's you can change the direction on it, you can, you know, manipulate it, you can do all kinds of different stuff. Now, one of the major downsides, it is ridiculously labor intensive. So a three inch uh, tube has a nine and a half inch roughly circumference on it. So if you have to do that 10 times, you have to weld almost 100 inches of, uh, of weld. I mean, we're, we're talking a lot of friggin' weld to do this. So it's extremely labor intensive. It's very, very expensive at the end of the day is what it usually translates to. And uh, you know, if you don't do it correctly, it's not very forgiving. So that's kind of the downsides, the good and the bad about pie cuts. Can you believe I kept that on a video card for well over a year? Well, I'm gonna be the next one that's gonna be on Hoarders Anonymous. <laughs> Actually, no, I'm not. All right, here's the deal. Uh, in Pie Cuts Part 1, you saw me working all in my software, which was Mastercam. Do you need software to do this? No. In fact, in the beginning of the video, I said you could follow along with a piece of paper and draft all of this stuff out on your own entirely. So, how do you actually calculate all of your pie cuts? How do you actually figure out what is needed, your center line radius, what size they need to be, what your top uh, distance is, what your bottom distance is, the center distance, all the rest of that good stuff? Well, this is how you do it, and I'm going to do it all entirely on paper, and then after this, I'm going to show you how to do it by hand. Start with a piece of paper. Now, I usually like to just draw a line right down the center of the piece of paper. And, uh, then I'm going to make a reference for my top line, which is going to be the top of your pie. And then I'm going to go for the bottom line, which will be the bottom of the pie. 
Now, our center of the, of the actual pie itself, which this is a three inch pie that I'm drawing here, so we drew one an eighth or uh, inch and a half. Grab yourself a protractor and mark out your cut angles, which in this case is nine degrees. Now, there's no reason to not have a protractor. In fact, if you just noticed that one, I printed that one out online, so there's no reason to not have one. The top of it measures out about an inch and three eighths. The bottom is roughly seven sixteenths of an inch, and the center of it is about seven eighths of an inch. Now, you're probably wondering, because I just blew right through this, exactly what the hell we're looking at. Well, here it is. This red section, this is your pie. This is what you just drew out. This section right here from the center of it down to the point where the angle meets is your center line radius. And the other section is the diameter of the tube at the top section there. So that's pretty much how you do all of that, how to draw it out. It's extremely important that you know how to calculate everything entirely by hand in case you don't have all the fancy tools, software, equipment, and everything else to do it all for you. But here is exactly how you cut all of this out, how you measure it, how you draft it, how you make it all happen entirely by hand. Now set your pie draft aside, grab another piece of paper, and you're going to need to know the circumference. Now the circumference of your tube is the total distance around the outside of it, which is good, calculated by circumference equals diameter times pi. So for all of you guys that are in the U.S. here, that's 9.42 inches, and for all of you guys that call these lobster cuts or lobster backing, metric measurements are on the right. The total distance between 9.42, you need to know the halfway point across that one, and that's that center line, and we're going to draw the end points here. So we're basically laying that entire circumference in the shape of the pie out on a flat surface. Now the other thing you need to know is where the center of that that you're drawing is, so mark that out from the edge of the paper, draw a line right down the center of it. Now go ahead and grab your draft of your piece of pie, because this has your exact measurements on it, just in case you can't measure it with a ruler or you don't have that graduated scale. The small ends go down on the, uh, the outside, the big end goes in the middle of it, draw a line to connect all of them, there is your piece of pie. Now normally I like to go ahead and flip this over, and uh, since we're going to have to trace this out you know, on lots of different pieces, I put some tape on the back side just to kind of stiffen it up, cut it out with the scissors, take it over to our piece of tube, Stick it on there with our same uh, references, our same line references, wrap it around, tape it again, voila, it's pretty close. Well, then we'll just trace it out with a marker. Now I should mention that, you know, it's, it's not the most accurate doing it by hand. You get pretty close, the more you, know, more you practice, the more you do it, and, you know, but at the same time it's still not the most reliable method. But we cut it out with a grinder, nice and easy. Clean it up the same way with the flap disc, let the flap disc do all the work. Now I'm going to check it out here. You know what, I'm about a sixteenth of an inch or so over. Or that's about, you know, what, 1.2 millimeters or something like that. So, you know, it's really close. Now the biggest downside, obviously, to doing it by hand is you dramatically lose your efficiency on it. In fact, if you were to bill out a job for this one, doing it entirely by hand, you're going to have to take a serious, serious, and I mean serious, labor cut if you do it entirely by hand because the cleanup, the cutting, the measuring, the everything else involved with it, while we did show you a little bit of an easier way to do it or a little bit more of an efficient way, you still have to cut all of it out entirely by hand, prep it, match it, make it happen, and all the rest of that good stuff. And that is very, very difficult to do, and it is extremely time consuming, especially when it comes to pie cuts. And we're talking madness on what you're actually going to make out of it versus the time that you put into it. So either way, next round, last and final question, how do you actually calculate the center line radius, or how do you even figure out what kind of assembly angle you need to put together? Well, there's actually not well, okay, flat, flat out, here we go. There is a science to it, but there's a, you know what, there's an easier way of doing this. And this is at least the way that I do it. I just kind of flat out eyeball it with a tape measure. And here is a very brief uh, summary of exactly how I do that. Check this one out. I typically just grab my tape measure. I stick it to a point of reference where I feel like the tube needs to swing. So when we put it up here, you'll see that the white section is actually the center line of what I'm referencing off of. That's what this white section on the screen is for. When I'm eyeballing it, I usually look for the outside of the tube. That would be the gray section. So shown in green here, center line radius plus half the tube diameter is the outside area or swing of the actual tube itself. And then on the uh, inside one, on the white section there, that's the, uh, the actual center line radius. So pie cuts. 
You have everything you need to know. Let's see you get out there and do it. Make sure you tag me along the way. Instagram at the.fabricator. Follow along at Facebook at the Fabrication Series. Hit me up on the FabricationSeries.com website. All of that information is in the description below. If you have any questions or comments, make sure you put them down there in the comments box below. Make sure you check out the entire playlist of pie cuts. Everything you need to know about pie cuts, examples, how to do it, how to cut it, how to calculate it, how to everything pretty much in the, in, in the midst of it and of course I'm going to make sure that I put some more information out there regarding pie cuts in the near future based on everything that everybody else has to offer but that's going to wrap it up for this episode I want to thank you guys very much for watching as always don't forget to subscribe to the Fabrication Series YouTube channel and I will see you guys on the next episode